electric. Hi everyone, Happy New Year. It's that time of year again. The first week of January is the time of year when we consider what did we do last year? What do we want to do next year? What are my New Year's resolutions and what am I going to do apart from go on a diet? Well, one of the things you need to do really is look at your energy usage because if you're not aware of the data, if you're not aware of how much you're spending, how much you're using, how much you're generating and whether you're making good use of it, all those sort of things, it's a bit like looking after your bank account, isn't it? If you don't look after your money, if you're not aware of how much you're spending, you could easily get into financial trouble. So it's sensible to keep an eye on your bank balance. It's sensible to keep an eye on your spending. It's also sensible to keep an eye on your energy usage and your energy generation from your solar panels and be aware of what's happening with that energy. Where is it going? Is it all going back to the grid? Am I making good use of it? Could I make better use of it? Am I using too much energy? Some of the things that are really good about the end of year process and looking at the whole year stats is it's very good to make sense of it because on a single month in the winter it might look bad and the single month in the summer it might look really good. But you'll get a good overall picture from the annual review. So that's what this video is for, to give that clearer, good summary of what we're using, consuming and spending. The great thing about this video on YouTube is the comments section. If you can add into the comments as well what you're doing, what you're paying, what you're generating, all that sort of information is a good comparison. It's a good way of checking and double checking. Are we getting similar results? From our similar sized arrays in similar homes, my house is a four bedroom house, it's 16 years old. It's got a heat loss calculation of between six and seven kilowatts. And it's 136 square meters. Usage wise, there's three of us in the house, two adults and a teenager. And the big difference between some houses is, I suppose my method of how we look after energy. I'm conscious of it. I'm aware of it. I talk about it. I'll comment if our daughter uses too much water for a shower, etc. where some families, they just use it and they don't care. And I guess that's why they have high energy bills, isn't it? So if you want to reduce your energy bills, if you want to pay less money across to the energy companies, then at some point you've got to do something about it. And that means look at the data, understand your usage and care about it. Right, there we go. That's uh, the introduction. Let's get on with the data. How have we done for 2022? What do the numbers look like? And how does that compare to last year? And the first one, 9.2 megawatt hours solar generation. Yep, it's wonderful, isn't it? Looking at the yearly numbers, we can talk in megawatt hours. 1.2 megawatt hours in June. November and December, though, just a couple of hundred kilowatt hours. So a big difference in the seasons. The breakdown of that for the 2.4 kilowatt array on a solar edge inverter was 2.73 megawatt hours, 1.139 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar. The Solus array, 3.9 kilowatts, that generated 4.8 megawatt hours, 1.23 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar panels. And the last array, the Solus 2.5 kilowatt inverter, 1.7 megawatt hours. But there were some days in January where that array wasn't installed, so it could be a little bit higher, just 0.684 kilowatt hours per kilowatt of solar. So that really shows the difference. It is half the performance of what we're getting from the south-facing arrays. This chart's a really good one, though. It's from Home Assistant, the main energy chart. Forget that the data is slightly inaccurate and showing different values. This is from the My Energy servers. Uh, it's showing 8983 solar generation instead of the 9.2 megawatt hours that the inverters measured. But what's important here, the 8 megawatt hours of home usage. So I'm seeing a good match between what we're generating in solar of 8.9 and what we're using in the home, 8 megawatt hours. Over on the left hand side of the chart though we can see it's showing 3 megawatt hours or 3.1 of export going out and 2.2 megawatt hours coming in. Actually again these are just slightly inaccurate figures, the Octobus energy is slightly less than that and I'll show you that in a moment. But I think it's showing a good balance, 8.9 generated, 8 being used by the house, 3 going out and 2 coming in. It is a shame, isn't it, that I can't use all of the energy that we're exporting or save it from the summer and use it in the winter because we do have enough energy. If ever they solve that, it'd be really, really good. The Octopus Energy app itself is showing 2,122 kilowatt hours of import from the grid. May through September, almost nothing. April and October, just a little bit. But the bigger 
usage throughout the year is at the end of the year and the beginning of the year when it's colder. So it's heating. In January, February, March, we were using the oil field radiators for a test and I was being probably more conservative and we didn't have any heating in the bathrooms. We're in November and December. We had the new heating system in. We had heating in the bathrooms. We were using a larger home storage battery, had more energy. So we're using more heating. And I think that's the difference there. We had electric cars at the end of the year. We didn't at the beginning. We had a better heating system that we're making better use of. The Octopus app doesn't show you a month-by-month cost on what you're being billed. You have to look at the bills separately. But using the Octopus Go Agile app, I can see that we spent £295.67 for those 2,122 kilowatt hours. Deduct off the standing charge, which we changed tariff midway through the year. So this is the calculation. £101.46 for the standing charge. Take that off the 29567 gives you 194 pounds and 21 pence for those 2122.98 kilowatt hours comparing those numbers to last year this is a clip from last year's video looking at 2021's energy usage 1370 kilowatt hours last year imported this year 2123 177 pounds cost versus 295 pounds so not quite doubled standing charge has gone up from 82 pounds to 101 pounds and the overall price for electricity was 95 pounds now 194 pounds so yeah small bills but it's gone up quite a lot apart from the price per kilowatt hour it's only gone up 2.1 pence was 7 pence a kilowatt hour now 9.1 pence per kilowatt hour excluding the standing charges. So I think we've done quite well. I think that's a good comparison. Last year we generated 6.3 megawatt hours, which I thought was excellent. This year we generated 9.2 megawatt hours. So a really good result. Fit array and deemed export. How did we get on there? Last year, 1,560 kilowatt hours exported. This year, 3,346 kilowatt hours exported. So a lot more export. Last year, we generated 3.9 megawatt hours on that same fit array. This year, the same array generated 4.75 megawatt hours, so a much sunnier year in 2022. We did really well. The deemed export on that is 2,375 kilowatt hours, half of what you generated. So we're getting paid more for the deemed export, 2,375. But if we'd been on a tariff where we're paid for every kilowatt hour we exported, it would have been 3,346 kilowatt hours we're being paid for. So another megawatt hour we could be being paid for. We're generating more and exporting more. At some point, I'll want to move across to the Octopus Agile outgoing tariff, but I'm just not ready to do that just yet. So how much were we paid for those FIT payments? Last year, we received £277 in FIT payments. This year, it's gone up to £326. So yes, more deemed export because we generated more on that fit array, but also it's inflation linked, so it's gone up again. On to our usage of energy then. 3,700 kilowatt hours last year for house usage. This year, it's up to 5,000 kilowatt hours, a whole 1.3 megawatt hours more usage. Hot water, though, very, very similar. 1,550 last year, 1,503 this year. Hopefully next year with the Mixergy tank that we've now got, it should be a little bit better. Car charging though, only 930 kilowatt hours last year, 1,806 kilowatt hours this year. Quite simply, we only had one car for part of the year last year. This year, we've got two electric cars. Talking of cars then, we did a total of 8,538 miles. If you divide that by 50 miles per gallon... And then times that by an average price, I think it's reasonable for the year of £7.50. Prices have just come down a little bit for petrol, but £7.50 was about the average for last year. That would have been £1,280.70 just for petrol, just for our miles. So we've saved an incredible amount considering our entire energy bill for the year for everything was £295. The thing I'm asked the most whenever we're talking about solar panels and batteries and electric cars is how much have I saved? What's the payback period? So the one thing to end the video on, I estimate I've saved £2,500 on electricity having solar and batteries this year. Add that to the £1,280 I've saved in petrol from having electric cars. 
I think we're doing quite well, and I'm very happy with the payback periods. I would like electricity prices to come down, and I don't mind if it takes longer to pay back. I'm not really interested in the payback. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video, and thank you for watching the channel throughout the year. I hope you continue to watch. I hope you continue to enjoy the content, the statistics, and I hope it encourages you to go electric yourself. Thanks again for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.